Hey fellow tankers, it's Mobius Y here once again with the first episode of the Road to the E4 grind. And in this first episode, I'm doing a review on the Tier 5 T67 US turreted tank destroyer. So my decisions for going down the T110 E4 line are because our clan actually uses E4s in clan battle strategies and our group simply does not have enough of them so I decided I'll get one of those that way I can be more useful in our clan battle matches now the reason why I'm starting off with the T67 at tier 5 and not something like the M8A1 at tier 4 or even lower is the XP requirements to upgrade from even the M8A1 to the T67. It's less than, I think, about 20,000 XP. It's a really, really short, short grind for, with the M8A1, simply put. Uh, but the T67 on its on its own, you can be stuck in it for a good maybe 20 or 30 games. Depending on how well you do, you could even be stuck in it for 50 games if you severely struggle with this tank before you can jump up to Tier 6. Me, personally, I did not have any problems with this tank, as it plays very similarly to the M8A1 already from Tier 4, so you should be very familiar with how you want to play this tank. This tank is very mobile, accelerates quite well, has a really good top speed, and has basically no relevance of armor, so to speak. The thickest plating of armor on this tank is 25 millimeters thick, and that includes even the gun mantlet. The gun mantlet adds 25 millimeters of spaced armor on the front of the turret, so there's really no armor to speak of. Essentially anything at tiers 5 and 6, and especially tier 7, will just shoot right through any point on this tank, aside from an auto bounce angle and damage you. So this mobile little piece of machinery is what you would term a sniper TD essentially there are basically three kinds of TDs in this game right now you've got your support TDs which have some semblance of armor uh, with a good blend of mobility and firepower so they actually are capable of being either first or second line combatants and bouncing some shots but for the most part they're just kind of filling in as a presence to support the front line. So you have your assault TDs, which are very heavily armored for their tier, uh, especially in the front, and those will be on the front lines helping press and attack, putting pressure on the front line tanks on the other team, as well as dishing out quite a significant amount of damage fairly quickly. And then you have TDs like the T-67, which are true sniper tanks. They are mobile enough to get into a good firing position. They have a decent enough camo where they can stay hidden from a good three to 400 meters away. And they have a fairly well-performing gun, basically like any other tank destroyer gun, where it will have really good penetration for its tier. The thing about tank destroyer grinds is they tend to be considered easier than other grinds because unlike medium tanks in particular, usually medium tanks have a fully upgraded gun that is rated for the same tier as the medium tank itself. Heavy tanks often get a gun that is rated one tier above the tank itself. In a lot of the cases, tank destroyers will be mounting a gun that is rated two tiers above their own, the own, the whole tank itself. This can make it seem like it's a lot easier to grind for tank destroyer lines than it does for anything else there. So enough chit chat. The T67 served me quite well, and there's a short path to get up to it. There is only one way to get to it, and part way up the TD line in the US tech tree, there is a split right here at tier 4. You can jump to either the tier 5 T67 or the tier 5 Wolverine from the T40. But way back down here at T2, tier 2, sorry, you start off with a T18, which gets a 37mm AT gun and upgrades to a 75mm howitzer, which is not bad. You can actually blow up a lot of people with that in one shot. You also have a choice of a quick-firing two-pounder gun, but a lot of people like the howitzer for its derp effect. You can kill a lot of tier 2s in one shot with it. At tier 3, we jump to the T82 very quickly. Again, you get a howitzer to start, and then you upgrade to a 57mm tier 5 rated gun which I personally preferred over this 105mm AT howitzer. This 105mm howitzer is very powerful, can one-shot a lot of Tier 3 and even Tier 4 tanks. But personally, I preferred the 57mm M1 L50. It's just much more consistent and very solidly performing gun. And from this T82, you can jump to either the M8A1 or the T40, and I chose the M8A1. 
Starting off in the M8A1, you get the 75mm M3 howitzer again, but your first upgrade is the 75mm HE M3 gun once again. And the package that I used with it was the 57mm M1 gun. You do get a 3-inch AT gun for the final package, but I wouldn't recommend using it as this 57mm gun was much more reliable. It performed absolutely solid on the M8A1, and I had a really good time playing the M8A1 with this 57mm gun for the final package. And from there, it's a short jump to the T67 at Tier 5. Stock, the T67 gets that 57mm gun again, and once more you're upgraded to the 3-inch AT M7 gun, which is a very, very short grind, as you all have, already have the gun researched. And then lastly, you wind up on the 76mm AT gun M1A1, which is a very solid, very well-performing gun. The overall stats for this final package is you get you get an engine with 460 horsepower, lending you a really good power to rate to weight ratio, and this is the reason for the T67's really good mobility. Essentially, works out really well. It can accelerate nicely, hits that top speed very quickly, and it's just a very mobile tank. Other aspects of mobility, the T67's final tracks upgrade gives you 32 degrees per second of traverse. That's not bad. That's um, basically like a bad medium tank kind of traverse speed, which is really, really impressive. Nothing to be scoffed at for sure. So this really helps the T67 boot around the map pretty quickly. Your view range in the T67 is 370 millimeters with the final, or sorry, 370 meters. Uh, with the final turret on the T67. Sorry, got a little mixed up there. Which is a pretty solid view range for a Tier 5 tank destroyer, especially one that is relying on its mobility and its gun performance and basically its complete lack of armor, uh, so to speak, of really, really solid view range, allowing you to uh, play Vision Wars at long range and outspot enemy tanks from quite a ways away. Now, the traverse speed on the turret itself is only 18 degrees per second. This is actually a, a big weakness of pretty much the entire line. It's slow turret traverse speed. It's 100% true that the advantage of this uh, tank destroyer line, the U.S. tank destroyer line over other ones, is that these tanks do have a turret allowing them to uh, get in easy, easier positions and land their shots, land their shots, excuse me, more easily than with a non-turreted tank destroyer. However, the major drawback of these turrets is that they turn very slowly. They only This one only turns at 18 degrees per second, and some of them down the line get even worse. So you should be used to this slow turret traverse speed with the M8A1 already, as the M8A1 also has very slow turret traverse. Now the real saving grace of the fully upgraded T67 is this 76mm M1A1 AT gun. A solid performing gun, really fast firing at 18.75 rounds per minute. You can get about a 3 second or less reload speed with all the proper equipment and consumables. You've got a solid penetration values for tier 5. Your standard AP gives you 128mm of penetration. You can pen and damage pretty much anything you'll come across. You'll have some difficulties with the likes of KV-1s and um, KV-85s, I believe. Uh, generally, Tier 5 and Tier 6 Russian heavy tanks will give you issues, at which point you can use your APCR premium ammunition, which grants you 177 millimeters of penetration. Both these types of ammunition are dealing 115 alpha damage per shot. Not a lot of damage per shot, but you can shoot this thing quite quickly, allowing you to pump out... A fair amount of damage at a rapid pace and just put the hurt on the reds before they can really realize that they have overcommitted around a corner and suffer a significant amount of damage. The penetration on the high explosive is only 38 millimeters but does 185 damage. Fairly normal for HE to have very low pen uh, but higher damage. However, myself, I don't think I even stocked high explosive ammo if I recall correctly. We'll see in a minute here, but I almost never shot high explosive ammo with this tank. I never had to, as the fast reload simply allows me to shoot armor-piercing ammo at even thinly armored targets and take them out quickly. The overall accuracy of this gun is not that great at 0 0.40, but it's solid enough for what you need it to do, especially at Tier 5. And the aim time on this gun is really good at 1.7. 
Very, very good aim time. Definitely boosted by the likes of skills such as Brothers in Arms or even Snapshot and Smooth Ride. But also from an enhanced gun laying drive, this tank will just aim in really quickly. Once you get to your position and you're trying to line up shots on enemy tanks, you'll find that this gun just aims in extremely quickly and it's extremely satisfying to go through that with this gun. You can, the sooner you can aim in, the sooner you can start putting shots down range on the enemies and racking up that, that precious damage of yours. Works out really well in, in the grand scheme of things. Very, very solid performing gun with a good blend rate of, of rate of fire, alpha damage, accuracy, and of course, aim time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the equipment and supplies that I used on this tank all together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jumping into the supplies, I stocked up 36 rounds of armor-piercing ammo, and this I shot more than anything else, so to speak, as there's not really much need for other types of ammunition, aside from very, very hard-armored targets. Like I said, pretty much just Russian heavy tanks. Apart from that, I almost always just shot regular AP ammo. I did stock 7 APCR premium ammunition, but I also rarely had to use this. Like I said, pretty much just hard armored targets, Russian heavies and the like. And I kept 2 high explosive ammunition, but I very, very rarely actually switched to it, uh, consciously switched to it when shooting at a soft armored target, say a Martyr 38T or uh, something along those lines, a very unarmored tank destroyer or even light tank. I very rarely saw a need to shoot high explosive, especially when I can shoot out uh, two or three armor piercing rounds in the same time it would take me to reload one HE and shoot that off at a softly armored target. For consumables, very standard setup, small repair, small first aid kit, and an automatic fire extinguisher. This is my go-to setup for consumables these days. One repair kit, one first aid kit so that I can fix one module, heal one crew member, and an automatic fire extinguisher to not only help reduce the chance of fire overall, but also put a fire out immediately if I was to catch fire. For equipment on the T-67, I ran a medium caliber tank gun rammer, an enhanced gun laying drive, and coated optics. The gun rammer and gun laying drive really help you dish out some damage at a rapid pace with this tank. Uh, although you do want to be careful about running out of ammo, as you saw in the consumables tab, you, you only carry about 45 shots with this thing. So a gun rammer and a gun laying drive, while you will be able to put shots more quickly and at a faster rate with these pieces of equipment, you're, you'll run out of ammo more quickly as well with this equipment. Now the real saving grace in this equipment setup is the coated optics, granting me a permanent 37 meter view range bonus. So with even just brothers in arms, I'm looking at over 410 meters of view range in a tier 5 tank destroyer. This will help me win the vision wars at longer ranges, such as 300 to 400 meters, um, allowing me to spot the enemy tanks that I want to start shooting immediately before they can spot me. And this really combines well with the camouflage skill, and I believe this crew had muffled shot as well by the time I was playing the T-67 as this was a, one of my better, really well-trained crews that I simply moved into this tank to play down this line. The crew was basically not seeing any use. I believe it was actually my old Chaffee crew, and I'd long since sold my Chaffee. So I decided to put the crew to use, and it already had nine crew skills on it by this point. And Camouflage and Muffled Shot were two of them that I switched it, that I switched out for. So those combined with the coded optics really, really make this tank sing lets me stay undetected put more shots down on the reds without them seeing me and being able to just dish out more damage very very good equipment setup there uh, served me very well with the t67 so that's essentially a look at the final package of the t67 as well as the equipment and supplies that i used let's go ahead and boot up tanks.gg and take a look at the armor profile on the t67 Okay, here on tanks.gg, we are looking at the T67. Like I said, this thing has no semblance of armor. As you can see, 25 millimeters is the thickest point on the outside of this tank, which is not spaced armor, and it's right in the front of the turret. And then the thickest piece of spaced armor is another 25 millimeters right in the gun mantlet. So, 
combined, you're still only getting 29 millimeters effective on the gun mantlet. Apart from that, there is no armor to speak of on this tank. The front, you're looking at 20 millimeters roughly. The sides of the turret, you're looking at 20 millimeters. You're looking at 20 millimeters in the side of the hull. The back, 13 millimeters, 8 millimeters. This thing has no armor to speak of whatsoever. It relies on its mobility and its camouflage to get into positions and remain unspotted while it is shooting the reds. Now, you need to keep an eye on the map when when reds start getting within 300 meters. You want to start thinking about repositioning to another undetected position. Otherwise, they will spot you, they will target you, and they will kill you very quickly with, in this tank because you only have about 350 hit points. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's even less than that, to be totally honest. Maybe 360. But you will die very quickly in this tank if you get spotted. So you want to stay just outside of their vision range, scoot back to another defensible location, and continue shooting them and putting damage down range. So essentially, if if you're if you're shooting this tank and you happen to bounce off of it, you know, just chalk it up to RNG. You probably hit them at an auto bounce angle. But if you bounce off of this tank twice in a row. Well, just do the usual tactic of screaming in the mic and blaming Wargaming for nerfing you or your tank. And then once you're back in the garage and nobody else can hear you, just commence crying and shutting off the game at that point. Um, let's take a look at the soft stats on the T67. So for the gun constraints, the T67 also gets really good gun depression and ele elevation. You're looking at 10 degrees of gun depression. The T67 can easily peak over ridge lines and get shots over hills and whatnot. And it gets 10 degrees of gun depression all the way around the tank. It also gets 10 degrees of gun elevation, allowing to point uh, quite high above itself, so that if people are above you on a hill, you can still aim up at them more than likely and put shots into the vulnerable drive wheels and lower plates as they're above you. Excuse me. The total DPM of the T67 without equipment is just under 2250 damage per minute overall. 2248.66 is the actual value, but that's a really good DPM value for a tier 5 especially. That's roughly tier 7, tier 8 medium tank values. Uh, so very good damage per minute uh, in this tank, and it's important this is why it's important that you stay out of the vision range of the enemies and just keep your guns singing because this can pump out a lot of damage very quickly. You just need to remember that you don't have a lot of shots, so in the later stages of the game, you want to start picking your targets, really picking your shots, and making those making those shots really count so that you don't do what I did and run out of ammo on your second game in a six-on-one. The terrain resistance values on the T67... Uh, fairly good. We're going to compare them against another Tier 5 tank destroyer. Let's take a look at the Stug, Stug 4, very popular Tier 5 German tank destroyer. The T67 gets more DPM than the Stug. It has more damage per shot and a higher penetration, as well as a faster reload time, and obviously a higher rate of fire. However, the aim time and dispersion values... <clears throat> Excuse me. The aim time and the maximum accuracy is significantly worse than the Stug 4. And the terrain resistances are also worse than the Stug 4. So the Stug 4 will accelerate much more quickly than the T67 to reach its top speed. But the T67 definitely has about a better power to weight ratio, better top speed, and better reverse speed. So once the T67 actually gets going, it will be faster than the Stug 4. Uh, by a long shot. T67 also turns more slowly than the Stug 4. The Stug 4 has a whopping 44 degrees per second. Very tough to circle a Stug 4. The T67 will barely be able to keep up with, it, with its 32 degrees per second of tra uh, hull traverse speed. Excuse me. So that's basically a look at uh, a quick look at the T67, its overall stats. Like I said, this thing has no armor. You can easily wreck this tank with high explosives, uh, if you so choose to load up a high explosive and shoot that at a T67, by all means, go for it. Uh, the only place where you might not do full damage is, like I said, right here in the gun mantlet, as there is 25 millimeters of spaced armored there, but there's a good chance that you'll still hit it, do a fair bit of splash damage, and honestly, hitting anywhere else with, in this, uh, with this tank um, using high explosive ammo, you'll very likely pen and cause a massive amount of damage to this tank, potentially one-shotting it, especially if you use a howitzer. So that's a look at the T67 on tanks.gg. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the module locations now. 
So the first bit of modules that we're looking at here are on the very front of the tank. You can see that on one side of the tank you have the driver, of course. On the left side of the tank, he can get taken out very quickly, very easily with uh, not even a well-placed shot, but even a high explosive round near the front of this tank will kill your driver and really eliminate one of the advantages of this tank over other tanks, which is your speed. The radio man is on the up opposite end of, from the driver, still on the front of the tank. He can die, but he's not necessarily essential to the crew. On the left side of the T-67, in the turret, you've got your gunner and your commander. They can easily be knocked out since that this whole tank is vulnerable. To ammo rack this, you basically want to shoot it right below the turret in the very middle. Um, anywhere in the hull in that region there, you can see in the white area, that's where the ammo rack is. And if you're shooting closer to the back of the hull, just behind ammo rack, you will very likely damage this thing's fuel tanks and or set it on fire, which will more than likely cause this thing to burn out. It doesn't have a lot of hit points, so if this thing gets set on fire, it's probably going to explode. The very back of the T-67 can be shot in the hull between the tracks, causing engine damage and severely cri crippling its speed. And one last look on the right side of the T-67, and you can see there's more ammo rack underneath the turret on the right side of the hull as well. There's fuel tanks just behind that, and in the very back of the hull, behind the rear drive wheel is more of the engine deck. So any shots in the sides of the hull anywhere on this tank can damage modules and severely cripple it or just cause more damage with fire. And the loader sits in the right side of the T-67's turret. Very easy to cripple the DPM potential of this tank with a well-placed shot there. Now it is entirely possible to have bad games with this tank because Simply put, it has no armor. They can; Those kind of tanks can be tough to play for a lot of people. It takes some getting used to having no armor, but there are also instances where you might just have an, unlu an unlucky moment. Somebody else on the other team could simply be using a howitzer cannon, such as an enemy Tier 4 Hetzer or even an M4 Sherman. For example, this game here, boom, I'm dead. Got one shot by the M4 using the derp gun. He was trying to shoot the friendly T40 right next to me, but I pulled up right in front of him at the wrong moment, and his shot didn't even really hit me at a good angle. He hit me in the front plate, a very sharply angled front plate, and it didn't auto-bounce off, but he still penned and killed me with that one shot. It's very easy to have a crappy game in the T67, as you can see. So let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay now. This first game I'm going to show you is right here on Wide Park. Now, normally, when you get a map like Wide Park with a very unarmored tank, you might think to yourself, oh, this isn't going to go well because I can't brawl, I can't side-scrape, yada-da-da-da. But you can still have a damn good game on an urban-styled map with an unarmored tank. You simply have to play smart. You can either utilize your tank's camel rating to look down a very long street with a long sight line and dump out shells down that street, or if your tank is really good at peekaboo, as in the gun just performs really well with a really good aim time, really good soft stats, and all that jazz, you can simply peek around corners and take shots where needed on tanks that are currently on a reload or uh, looking at another friendly tank on your team. So looking at the team composition, I knew that it was a very tier 6 game. About half, half of the team on both sides were, were tier 6s, and then the rest were tier 5s, and there was only one or two tier 4s, one on each team. So seeing that, right away I knew where I was going to go. I'm going to get take advantage of long sight lines down this street here and get shots underneath, underneath the bridge, which is where a lot of action tends to happen on Wide Park. Unfortunately, I only damaged the track on the Leopard, and my second shot flat out missed and hit the building next to the Leopard. I was trying to take him out before he could get away. So I simply repositioned and decided to chill here and wait for the bad guys that were going to come. I was hoping the Tog would show up, as that would be easy damage to farm on the Tog, as it is very unarmored, but it has a lot of hit points, so I could easily have farmed a lot of damage that way. The KV-2 on the other team manages to take out a teammate, but he's pulled too far forward, and is sitting completely broadside, so a couple well-placed shots into his front drive wheel kept him tracked there, allowing my teammates to also sh put shots on him and finish him off quickly. The T-150 also poking out way too broadsides, tried shooting him in the drive wheel, only managed to track him with no actual damage to his HP pool. So at that moment, I noticed the TOG was there and realized I can do some damage by shooting the TOG. He has not nearly enough armor to bounce my shots, so I got a qu couple quick shots on the TOG, 
started farming a little bit of damage that way. Unfortunately, I did get spotted upon shooting, so I decided to pack back up just a bit, put a bush in between me and these enemy tanks, and then once I had a position, I immediately found the Tog once more and started shooting him. Tog continued trying to back up and just get out of the way. There's three heavy tanks sitting right there. Lots of potential damage sitting right here in front of me, so I simply just pointed my reticule where it showed that there was a piece of enemy there, and I just started pulling the trigger. The Tog backed up too far. I lost my shots on him. The T-150 is too well angled for me to properly pen, so I decided to start shooting at the Churchill 7. At this point, I was shooting APCR, as I didn't think I would be able to reliably pen and damage the... Churchill 7 with standard AP at that point. Myself and a teammate managing to finish off the Churchill 7 and take him out of the game once and for all. So the game's already down to the final five tanks on the red team. This was a very quick steamroll. Barely two and a half minutes into the game, they're down to four tanks. M4 comes over the ridge here, guns blazing, trying to take out my teammate of the tank destroyer. I simply chased him down to try to put shots on him, but uh, Lele with his M4 and his derp gun manages to plant a well-placed shot and finishes off the enemy M4 once and for all. So upon seeing that, I decided to continue forward. I tried to peek over the hill just enough to get a shot, but the Tog is backed up just barely too far for me to see him. So I simply auto-locked the Panzer Syphilis and planted a quick shot on him to finish him off and take, take him out of the game once and for all, granting us the victory. Very fast game, only about a three minute game, just went by super quickly. And not a bad result whatsoever. 15,000 silver earned, 1433 XP, 959 damage dealt with 262 assisted. Not too bad whatsoever, and both my platoon mates dealing over 1000 damage each. Which, uh, very solid performance by all three of us in tier 5 tanks when it was a very tier 6 game overall. So this next game I'm going to show you is on Redshire. Uh, this was one of my last games in the T-67, and this was an absolute monster of a game. Um, when you use a, a tank such as the T-67 to its strengths on a more open field environment such as Redshire, you can really put a major hurt on the enemy tanks you come across uh, in in this game specifically. So, loading in, I immediately checked the team, team composition and saw that we were quite top tier. About uh, six or seven tanks on both teams were actual tier fives, and then the rest were all tier fours and tier threes. So I knew that I had a very good, very good opportunity to play a really good game here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as soon as the game started, I went to the right side, which is where a lot of the action tends to happen with most of the heavy tanks in the game. And I decided that I'm simply going to head over that way, and that's where I'm going to play my support role for this game. I'm going to back up my platoon mates, um, who were both in a heavy and a medium tank, respectively. And they were going to essentially be the front line for this battle on the far right-hand side of Redshire. So I was going to simply stay close by, get some initial damage in on the tanks that my platoon mates are going to come across, get some early shots in, and start weakening, the, start weakening the enemy reds before they actually get in range to shoot at myself and my platoon mates or my teammates. Peeking up, though, we have a suicide scout going in, so I simply pulled up into a position to try and shoot these guys. Lost the Stug, but the Panzer 4D, I fired a semi-blind shot on him. Wasn't sure if I hit him, then I simply locked onto the S-35 and pulled the trigger, took him out of the game super quickly. So that was a very short game for... That gentleman in the medium tank on the other team, taking him out super quickly. Pulling forward just a little bit more, getting the French B1 Tier 4 heavy tank spotted. I immediately started putting shots on him, and in a couple quick shots, he's already half dead. However, upon losing him, I decided I'm not going to shoot, shoot over there blind anymore, so I decided to turn my attention to this Churchill one that instantly got spotted when he came into view. Started putting shots on him. Really racking up some damage, putting shots on this Churchill 1. A really lucky shot into his front drive wheel, tracking him so that he can't escape. And then two more shots to quickly finish him off and take him out of the game. So their top-tier heavy tank just went from full health to dead in about 10 to 15 seconds there. Looking back to the left, seeing a Matilda spotted. Got a really, really lucky shot off on that Matilda, taking him out of the game right after somebody else whacked him with a really heavy hit for most of the Matilda's hit points. 
Unfortunately, I was already spotted at that point, so something hit me for just just under uh, 60 points of damage there. So I lost about a fifth of my or six of my hit points already, and I decided to just simply pull back down behind the hill and get back to being unspotted. Knew there was a Wolverine tank destroyer on the far left, so I didn't want to peek too far forward, and there's still something sniping from the middle. So as soon as the Wolverine got spotted again, I wanted to take him out. He seemed the biggest threat, so I started putting shots on him right away. Really lucky shot. Second shot on the Wolverine that hit him actually penned and took him out of the game. Very lucky shot, considering I wasn't even aiming at him technically. But RNG was on my side that time. So seeing this Type T-34 alone, myself and Lele... Uh, decided to simply charge him so that we could take him out as a Type T-34 is very dangerous to have on the battlefield, especially in the middle stages of a game like this. The Type T-34 can deal a lot of damage really quickly. So in doing so, both me and the Lay took him out very quickly. And uh, pulling forward, seeing the Stug 3G, I started shooting him right away, bouncing three off his gun mantlet. He starts ba backing off. I bounce a fourth one off of his gun mantlet. At this point, I was not a happy camper. <laughs> Having four shots in a row go, go directly into the Stug 4D's gun mat, or Stug 4G's gun mantlet, denying me damage and taking him out quickly enough. So I suffered a nasty hit from the Stug before he was actually killed in this game. Pulling forward on this Panzer 4D, he decides to try and charge, uh, not realizing that there's actually three of us here, so he's caught all alone. He hit, gets a lucky hit on me, taking out my ammo rack. And severely crippling me, forcing me to use my repair kit to fix my ammo rack. But a little focus fire and myself and my two platoon mates, we managed to take him out very quickly. Now there's only a Valentine AT and the enemy artillery, which is a Bishop British artillery unit left. So we weren't quite sure where they were. We knew somebody was sniping at us from the middle on this ridge to my left. And it never got spotted. So pulling forward, I expected to come across the Valentine. And sure enough, there he is. But before I can take him out, both of my platoon mates whack him for a good portion of his hit points. And then he finally gets taken out, uh, incapable of spotting us for his friendly artillery. The artillery did try blind firing at me, but uh, completely missed his shot as I simply decided to stop and wait and see if I could juke his shot out. Pulling forward, I just barely spot him. Shot an HE round at him for only 36 damage. And that that's why I rarely shot HE with this thing, because uh, I shot it right into basically the uh, superstructure of the bishop for minimal damage. So I simply loaded AP to, to kill this guy in two accurate shots as opposed to potentially uh, only doing another 36 damage with an HE shot. So spotting him, three more shots, takes the bishop out, and that's the end of this game. Another fairly quick game, only about a five-minute game that time as well, but a much better result than even the wide part game as you can really play this tank to its strengths on a map like Redshire. Got a Top Gun Mastery Badge, high caliber with 2,078 damage dealt, and easily getting the most XP on my team with two medals earned. So folks, that's an in-depth look at the T-67 as well as a couple uh, couple pretty dang good games from my side in the T-67. Remember, this tank's very mobile. Uh, it's, got, it's got a fairly, fairly hard-hitting gun with really high penetration. Not a heck of a lot of damage, but it can really pump out some DPM, dealing just under 2250 total damage per minute. Uh, but you really got to start picking your shots in the later portions of the, of the game, as you can start to run out of ammo. Just remember to stay out of range of the enemies so that you can continue to shoot your gun, keep it singing, as once you are spotted, you can be ver killed very quickly due to this tank having no armor as well as a very low hit point pool of only 360. So that's a look at the T-67 and this will end episode 1 of the Road to the T-110 E4. This has been Mobius Y. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next episode as we jump to the M18 Hellcat at tier 6. In the meantime, I hope to see you on the battlefield or in my next video. Happy tanking!